Hello everyone, today we've got an awesome video looking at some retro tech, um, one of my favourite types of retro tech, we've got some retro audio equipment, very very nice stuff to show you today. Um, it's a little bit rainy outside so sorry if you can hear some background noise but anyway we'll drown that out in a little bit with some music. But anyway, um, as you can see I've got uh, a little bit of vintage tech here in front of me but we're going to talk about this a little later, I've got a few things I want to talk about first. Um, today we're mixing the old with the new, and this is something that's becoming very popular. How do I get maybe that retro look or that retro sound um, working with something modern like an iPod? Now here we have your bog standard iPod. Um, no modifications, no nothing, this is just how you buy your iPod. And um, can you get this playing on something like that? Well it's something we're going to explore today, and um, it's way more simple than you probably think. Now, first off, before we start doing that, why would you want to do it? Now, basically, when you have uh, a unit like this, you're sort of limited in a way. Um, you, you, can, you limit yourself by your imagination because uh, mixtapes, here we have a mixtape uh, that I made not so long back on my cassette deck upstairs before it broke. Um, I got a load of songs off of a record and I recorded each one to this cassette. I've got a load of different songs on here, and I have a Sony Walkman that I have in the past played this cassette on and listened to it, okay? It's just like having a sort of limited iPod with you, you know, very retro way of doing things. Now, of course, not everyone has the facilities to be able to uh, make a mixtape. So wouldn't it be easier if you could just plug your iPod straight in and you'd get more choice? Now, this isn't something that I do because I like cassettes. I love seeing them go around, I love the sound, and I enjoy making mixtapes. But for lots of people, using an iPod with something that looks retro and sounds retro is a very appealing thing. Now, there are a lot of remakes out there. There are a lot of remake turntables that look like the old ones, but they're just a box with shiny bits on and they're all digital components inside. It's not cool at all. This is the proper deal. This is the proper retro stuff. And the question is, can you plug your iPod into it? So we've got a range of three different units I'm gonna show you here today. And the first one is this little beauty. This is a Sony radio with cassette from, I believe, 1975. And this little beauty is absolute quality. So first off, what we're gonna do is turn her on on the side and we'll eject and we'll pop in a cassette. Here I have the police. Okay, we're going to close her up and hit play and turn her up slowly. Now, this cassette player is 37 years old and it sounds crystal. It's absolutely beautiful to listen to. But like I said, not everyone has the facilities to use cassettes, which is understandable. Obviously they don't sell them on shop shelves anymore. You can buy blank cassettes fairly easily, but you're gonna have to make them. Now, with something like this, you have an awesome opportunity to be able to use your iPod with it. Now I'm going to make sure the volume's all the way down and I'm going to pull out the magic cable. Now, if I wanted to plug my iPod into one of my retro apps, I'd just go straight into the auxiliary input, which is a light, uh, right and left phono jack. Um, RCA jack, you know, they're uh, red and white. This is what you do. You can put it in even into the tape deck input if you want. You could have a load of iPods plugged into those apps. But these are a little bit different. Not a lot of them have phono inputs. Most of them have what's called a five pin DIN input. And this is uh, the input that you can hopefully see in the frame here. Uh, let me bring it up a little closer so you can see. There it is. That's a five pin DIN input. It looks a little bit like an S video connection. Um, DIN connectors aren't really used very much at all today when it comes to audio connectors, but basically that's what it looks like. 
Okay, now it's a fairly large connector. And then we have a cable going down to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack stereo, okay? Now these cables are about $1.99 on eBay. So if you have an old stereo and you have a DIN input, it's definitely worth buying one of these to give it a go. But I'm talking a lot. Let's just plug it in and fire it up. Now then, if we pop that DIN connector in there, we've got to do it the right way up. Got to line up the pins. It's a little bit like uh, an XLR connection. It's a little bit like a DMX5 pin connection, but with more, uh, but a little bit smaller in size. But anyway, a lot of you are probably familiar with DIN connections. Now, I have my iPod plugged into this little unit here. This is a mono unit, okay? We've got one speaker, it's from 1975, but that really doesn't matter. If you want this retro look and retro sound, you're gonna be in heaven when you're listening to mono. Now, what I recommend doing on your iPod is if you have the settings, I know the iPhone does it, I haven't looked in here, I think it does, you wanna turn mono on, because most tracks these days are stereo, and some instruments are panned right, and pan left. So on a system like this, depending on how the cable works, how the DIN connection works, some of them may only accept one channel through the speaker. I'm not sure what this one does. A good test would be to find a hard pan song and see if you can hear everything. But setting your iPod to mono would still be a brilliant idea. Okay, what we're gonna do is play a song. And we're gonna turn the iPod up. Um, let's just whack it up all the way. And let's turn the volume of the stereo up. I say stereo, it's a mono. <laughs> Here we go. So that is my iPod playing through this little radio, and it sounds really good. Now, through this particular um, radio, it's not the loudest, um, but the cassette does go louder, but I think a lot of these DIN connectors work in um, various different ways. Now, the signal coming from an iPod is not that big because it's designed for headphones, so it does need to be preamped in such a way, and if it's not preamped, you need a pretty powerful amplifier to be able to hear the signal. Um, but it goes pretty loud. What you've got to remember is my camera, when it hears audio, bumps down the gain, which is annoying, so you can't get an idea of how loud it is. The cassette goes louder, but this goes pretty damn loud as well, okay? So this is using the playback feature of the DIN connection. And that's brilliant, okay? Now then, guys, I want to mention something about this quickly. Um, if you like the look of it, you can play your iPod through it. The cassette works wonderfully. It's got gorgeous, gorgeous features. I mean, look at this display here. Look at that. That is just wonderful. If you're interested in something like this, you can buy it on eBay right now. The link will be in the video description. I'm not advertising. You get the DIN cable with it. And, you know, I guess I am advertising, but I'm just saying you don't have to buy it. If you want to take a look at it, the link is in the description. So this is an awesome little unit, lovely buttons up here. And uh, as you can probably or hopefully hear, it plays very well. Now then, let's bring this one down and let's talk about something slightly different behind it. Okay, now here we have an 80s system. And this one is fairly different. Of course, it's stereo. It looks a lot different. It um, probably looks a little bit more familiar to some of you because if you grew up in the 90s, then a few people probably still had these um, actually in daily use. So if we swing it around, you can see that this one has a DIN input. But this is a lesson worth learning. This particular DIN input does not, from what I can hear, and what I've experienced does not in any way pass through the internal amplifier. Now then, of course, a little system like this has an internal amplifier for the speakers, okay? That's why you have a volume knob. Now, I can tell you for a fact, or for a pretty certain fact, that that DIN connector does, it bypasses the amp because this volume connection, 
this volume knob at the top, sorry, does nothing when the iPod is plugged in. And when you plug the iPod in, it's, it's fairly quiet. You can control the volume on here, but you get no response from any of the controls up here. So this wouldn't be an ideal um, system to use with your iPod, but with regards to actually owning it, if you've got something like this, you're going to be using cassettes or the radio. So that's that. That could just be true for that particular system, but it may be similar for other stereos out there, I'm not too sure. Now then, I'm going to bring up the third and final little demonstration piece that I have here. And here she is. Now then, I'm struggling to get her on the desk. Here we have it. <laughs> now then, that is what you call a ghetto blaster. Check it out guys. You've got your cassette on the front. You've got gorgeous display here for your radio. You've got a lovely sort of view set up here. And then you've got your little three band graphic EQ. And then you've got balance, volume, and all sorts of controls up here. You've got your two speakers either side. Of course, like I said, you've got your tape deck down here. Uh, you've got a headphone jack, which is in fact a full size headphone jack, which is awesome. And look, You've even got a Dolby noise reduction system in here for the cassette. So it's a lovely, lovely, lovely system. This is, um, this is pretty much the nuts when it comes to stuff like this. So let's flip her around. This is the all important part. And I'm gonna check the frame to see if you can still see some stuff. So we've moved the frame slightly, guys. Sorry if the whole video has been filmed a little bit off-center, but whatever. Um, now, on the back here, we have two inputs. We have phono inputs and our five pin din. Now, what's the difference? Well, here we have phono, okay? Now, a lot of you have probably got phono to mini jack leads hanging around. Um, the reason you may have these hanging around is because they're used with uh, computer speakers often and uh, to connect your computer speakers to the 3.5 mil jack to plug into your computer. I just butchered that sentence, but basically a lot of you have probably seen these before. And if you're into vintage audio, of course, you've seen these before as well. Now, this particular phono input includes a phono preamp for a turntable. And the way you can tell that is because it has a, a ground post, okay? So you put your little ground pin in there for your turntable, screw that up, plug it in here, and you better play your turntable through this ghetto blaster. Now I can plug my iPod into that, but because it's a little preamp and whatnot, my uh, iPod is very, very loud through the, this phono connection. So you could use it if you've got that cable hanging around, but we have a DIN plug here. And do you know what, guys? This DIN plug works fantastically with this, with this ghetto blaster and my iPod. It really, really works well. Okay, so let's flip her back round. And here she is. Beautiful system. Now, I'm gonna unplug the other one and plug this one in. Okay, you can see that she's powered up. Let's see if you can see those LEDs on the camera. Okay, you might be able to. There you go. You can see a couple of LEDs there. Okay, powered up, lovely. Let's zoom back out. And let's get the iPod rolling. Um, we use the same track as the other one. tell but that is very very loud now this is a sound and a half um, all I can say is if anyone wants me to rate the success of plugging your iPod into a DIN connector on a ghetto blaster like this 
All I can say is, if you want to listen to your iPod through a retro system, which is a pretty awesome thing to do, then, you know, yes, this is an awesome way to do it. Um, I hope you found this pretty informative, guys. I just wanted to give it a go. These cables can be found on eBay for around $1.99, I believe, and they range in price just like pretty much any other cable you can buy. Um, like I said, this little unit here that we showed at the start also works with the DIN connector, and that's on eBay right now, including a DIN cable. Now, just before I go, I'd like to mention another quick factor. This video has been a little bit chopped up on the camera side of things, but hopefully it's okay. On the other end of our DIN connection, we obviously have a 3.5mm jack um, to go into an iPod. But just because this video is related to iPods, this doesn't limit you to iPods. Anything with a 3.5mm jack that outputs an audio signal will play through this. Computer mobile phone, iPod like we've shown, CD player, portable uh, Walkman CD player, mini disc player, anything with one of these on the end is going to play through this monster. And do you know what? That's such a cool feeling because this sounds fantastic. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, we're going to take a look at a lot more retro stuff coming up very soon. These are very, very nice. Um, fun to play around with, fun to listen to, and fun to use, and they look blinking brilliant in your bedroom. So, that's been all from me. I'll see you in the next video.